Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Wendy and this is Summer Bay Studio. And if you watched my my next to last, no, my previous video, which I will put a link to below, um, I did some stenciling in this altered book journal using these this green paint as a background. And I had some green paint left over and I didn't want to waste it. So I just painted it on this blank page. So what I'm going to do right now is just finish the page with some green paint and some a little bit of blue paint and this is an iridescent one it's actually called iridescent blue green and I'm I'm going to try and use just a tiny dab so that I don't waste paint like I have been doing as you can see by the big blobs here all of this is dry so I'm not going to be using that but I can use this same spot here. And I've also got the iridescent green. So I'm going to just finish the page using these paints. And these are acrylics. Come on, go back in. And I'm using just an inexpensive brush I found at Michael's. So I want to I want to do some a little bit of mixing. But I want to cover the whole page, and I also really don't want it to be too wet. But I'm just going to add in some color. The reason I don't want it to be too wet is because I don't want it to take forever to dry. It's been a really long time since I've used acrylics, and I just felt like I really wanted to get back into it and do some, do some paintings. And I used to have uh, watercolors in galleries and. You know, I sold a lot of them here, there, and kind of all over the world, to be honest. And then I've tried other things, but right now I'm I'm just kind of experimenting with art and life because I can. I've reached a stage in my life where I have a, little, a few more options, and I'm very happy. So let's just get some paint all through here. I want a little bit more of this blue. Like I said, I don't want too much water, but my brush is getting dry, so something's got to give. Let's see if I can pick up some more of that. Just get the bottom here. Make sure all the page color is covered, even right out to the edge, which I think I've pretty much got here. Come on, finish that off. A bit more in here. Got the last of this blue. I want it to be predominantly green anyway. However, um, you know what, I want a little bit more blue. Just a little tiny bit. Just picked up a little dab of water. I like the iridescent. It's so pretty. Mind you, I like sparkly things anyway. I like light. I like bright. There, I think I'll just leave that to dry and I have a little fan facing me because these lights make me so hot. So that can just stay like that for now and I'm going to put this away as is because I have a place for it now because I bought a little cart so I've got more, more storage spaces. Now on this page here I'm going to do something completely different and I need a little bit more room because I want to cut some paper so I don't think I need to put that out all right what I've got here is a picture of an iris it's a botanical picture or it's actually watercolor and it comes from this book uh, Some Flowers by Vita Sackville West Watercolors by Graham Rust so it has some gorgeous stuff in it and 
um, I've cut a bunch of them out, but they're really hard to cut out around these skinny stems. So in this case, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. And what I do want to do is make sure that it's going to fit on the page. So I have a page here that I've torn out and practiced some things on. And what I think would be perfect would be just inside this black line all the way around, except for at the bottom, it's about a quarter of an inch. And I did get a new blade for my cutter. because it was starting to chew up the paper, which you never want. So this should fit nicely onto this page. But I, I don't want it to be into the corner very far because what happens then is it wants to pull up this way. So I'm going to have to cut off a little bit more, which is fine. Um, actually a little bit more all around. Now let's measure. Perfect. That's perfect. It also covers up this title. All right. Now I'm just going to pop this away. And I'm going to glue this and spread the glue around with probably a knife. Has a This has a really pretty illustration on the back, but then, you know, I can't use it because that would mean wrecking the front. I'm using this glue because it's, I, f I have found that glue sticks are not very reliable. My daughter told me about one the other day um, that is from Japan. And she said it's kind of expensive but it actually really works. I'll have to ask her what the name of that is and see if I can get some. And I'm just going to put some glue in here because I'll spread it around. You can tell by it, I've been painting today. I'm trying some new things using paint and gesso and gelatos and the Jane Davenport color sticks and those kind of things. I've had some for quite a long time and just haven't been able to kind of get at it and figure out what I wanted to do about it. I think this will work. Okay. Make sure I don't have glue on my fingers. Clean off my little spreader knife right away. And the glue that's here. Green glue, green paint and glue on things today. So I'm going to just put that all to the inside so that it doesn't make a mess of me and everything else. Now I want to press this down really well. It's quite a wet glue so it does make the paper buckle, which is not a look I like but it tends to, it'll shrink up again. This paper stretches when it gets wet and then it shrinks again when it gets dry. Okay, I think that's going to work. Now how are we doing with this? This is almost completely dry. I tried to use really thin paint and thin, thin water. Okay, now I have some ideas for this page and I pulled out some odds and ends here. And then I put them somewhere and then I can't find them and then, you know, I have, I have a lack of space, which I have mentioned before. However, it doesn't stop you. That's the great thing. It doesn't stop you. From that same book, I cut out this little piece here and I'm going to put it just right there. But I'm also going to use, for that, I think I will use the glue stick, a glue stick. And I'll just put it on a scrap so I can go over the edge. Like this. Tuck that all back in there. 
and I'll put this right up in the corner. It's I for iris, and I do want it to be straight, so I'm going to adjust that. There. And sometimes it's hard to see when you're looking at from above, so I'm going to tip it up this way. Yeah, I think that's good. I think it's straight. I also have some interesting things here that might work. I like this. If you listen carefully, the silence is beautiful. I'm going to tear that using my tearing ruler. And I'm also going to move some of this stuff out of the way. It's coming together. It's coming together. This, if, mm. Okay, I have it in two different... I'm just trying to decide which which format. See, if, if you listen carefully, silence is beautiful. There's that, and then there's this. I think I like this better. I'm not really sure why. But let's give this a try and see if we can make it tear perfectly. find with this ruler you have to hold it down really hard I don't think I even got it very straight I want to um, to do some distressing along here and I I don't have um, purple or well I do have purple and green I do have purple and green the question is where are they here we go I've got these little cheap ones I bought at a dollar store or something let's just see what I have there's a green and a blue green, this green, this green. Wow, I have lots. And this one, and this one. I'm gonna just test these before I try anything too tricky. This is always kind of my motto: test it first. Oh, that is nice. That that is nice. Let's see what this one does. See where I was trying out some jellies, gel, what do you call them? Gelatos and Jane Davenport's um, color sticks this morning. I think I like that one. Oh, it's almost neon, isn't it? Hmm, a little duller would be, would be good. That one is quite blue. Oh, do I even have a purple? Because a purple would work. I have a purple. Look at that. I have two. Okay, cover these up. Just pop them back in there. So I don't have everything all over the place. And one. Definitely this one. Yeah, I like it. Okay. There's a decision made. I'm just going to go along the edge of this. I wish it wasn't quite so white, but this is fairly white anyway, so I guess it's, it's not really that big a deal. There's one thing I could try, I suppose, with chalk, but I, I don't think I will. Um, I also have, I 
have these ones, so I could do. I'm going to try this too to see if I can just. What do you think? I don't know about this paper. Let me try it on a different one. I'll try it on this. Yeah, no. I don't trust it to turn out looking good, so it's not going to happen that way. That's just fine, and these can all go back in their little, their little dish here. That's very handy. Those are really handy. Okay, I am going to use um, the glue stick on this again and just put it kind of, let me see. I think I like it down there. So we'll do it that way. And just This is a really goopy glue stick. I went and found these Uhu ones on purpose because um, different people had said they're, they work the best. And and one of my my lovely subscribers did should suggest a different one that, I, that you can buy at a dollar store that's supposed to be double stick, but I could not find it there. So I guess, and the, we, we probably have just different stock in the US and Canada, and I'm in Canada, so. It would be nice, even if it's the same company, sometimes it's just different stuff. So, so there's that page done, which is on the back of this one, it gives it some, some oomph. And now I am going to move on to my next step, which is, I want to put a stencil along the side here or along here. I think I want it along here because I want to put a pocket here. Okay, so that's that's going to work. And I'm going to use my acrylic paints again. And one of these little sponges. And um what color should I use? I am thinking I don't have anything purple yet, so that is on my shopping list. I want something that stands out. I wish I had it purple. I don't think these two will make make that great a mix. However, I'm willing to give it a try. So we've got a nice bright pink and a nice bright blue. Which I'll just pop in there and then use a knife to kind of mush them up. What do you think? Is it getting to be purple? Kind of. It is kind of purple actually. I'm going to use this little, this little thing, but what I want to do is mix a little bit of water into it. That'll work. That way it's not too, the color's not too dense. All right, let's, let's see how this will work. Okay, let's try this. And again, practice. Okay, that took a lot of the, just the material off of it. Now these things are, are stick, um, what do you call it? Um, adhesive on the back. But I don't really want to stick it because it's hard to get off, and I don't really trust that it'll come off without taking paper with it. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, this is turning out fine. 
went with the stronger paint and I'm just going to pick it up, up straight from the palette like this. Make sure I'm holding it down well and get all those these little spots and corners. So these pages are true kind of mixed media, I guess. Try not to have any square edges from this square sponge. There, how gorgeous is that? That is perfect. Now, it's got paper on the back, so I dare not rinse it. However, I will just get rid of my palette again and let it let it dry itself. And what I'm going to do then is press this onto this page and see if I can get as much of that paint off as possible. I need a brayer and I did get one. There we go. I borrowed my daughter's so I could try some things and she had materials that she wasn't using or supplies that she wasn't using so I said yeah let me let me borrow your stuff so I don't go out and buy it and then find out that I never really use it or don't really like it or whatever. Okay now I'm going to try and clean this with one of these baby wipe things. It doesn't matter if I don't quite frankly because it's um you know, it dries, it's not going to probably get into paint anyway, but look at this, it comes right off. This is a, a dream. So sometimes dreams do come true. Oh, sorry about the wiggling. My table is, um, is a tilt table, so it doesn't necessarily, it's not all that solid. Okay, that is probably almost dry anyway, but I'm not going to touch it. What I am going to do is choose something for a pocket. And I have some some purples because um, this is from my French vintage ephemera set. What I would like to do is incorporate some purples in here in the form of something like this, where it's a pocket and then that seems to be a little too big. That's the same bird, that wouldn't do. I love this, but I don't really want to cover this up because it's so gorgeous. Um, I have some of these. The style actually kind of works with this. Um, let's see, green, again I think it's too big, um, let me see, and no I haven't forgotten that title, I will go, I will deal with it, but what I want to do is find something that's a little bit slimmer and I think I have some tags that work so let's have a look for those let's move this right out of the way What's that one that's like a postcard Funny when you want something upright, all you can find is it's the landscape. I think these will work. Well, let's see if we can find something that has some color in it. Oh, this one might. That one, that's lilac. Yeah, I think that'll work. I think that's the one. And then if I make it a tuck spot, then this can just pop in here. 
Okay, let's go forward with that idea. So there's that one and that one. I was going to put in something with this, but I don't think I need to. And I think this is actually works well enough on its own. Although I might put a little, punch a little hole in it and put a ribbon on it. I think I will do that. I wonder where the center is. Okay, now I want to use my purple again for both of these to um, distress the edges. Oh, that looks so pretty, doesn't it? Yes, I, I like it. And I'm surprised how well these little blocks work. So there's a problem solved if you if you if you're not in the position to to just buy a bunch of these which are not inexpensive you can buy these little guys probably at a local craft store or or even dollar store which is where I think I got mine this one I want to come in a little closer so it will look a little bit more brushed, which is fine. I mean, there's no reason not to. But I want the purple to, to make more of an impression. So let's just do this. Nice. Very nice. I like it. And I need a purple ribbon for this. So... Um, I think one of these will work, but they are a little bit on the heavy side. I like this one. So you know what I'm going to do, just to toughen this up, I am going to use this other piece of paper, which I cut out of a, a planner. I'm going to glue it down and then cut around it. I learned my lesson about that before, where I tried to make the cut and then tried to make the mat match up, and it's like, wait a minute, that's not the way to do it. And I'm going to just cut out this hole again, line it right up there, and then we'll do this again on this edge, which might hang over just a shade. And on this edge too, so it gets it from the back. I'm quite excited about this book because I'm getting close to the end and um, it's been so much fun to do. Okay, that's, that's okay there, that's okay there. And now I just need my ribbon. I hope it goes through that hole okay. I think I'll keep it quite short. Something like that will probably work. Let's grab my sharp scissors and we'll turn it here and cut it diagonally. These aren't actually cloth scissors so I'm kind of winging that. And I'll just throw that back in the drawer. Because it has bends in it, I like to sort of finger press it and hope that it comes out. Ideally you want to iron it, but I don't have an iron here. And I don't want to take a break to go do it, so I'm going to fold this a little bit unevenly. And then put it through here like that so it makes a loop and then these ends will go through that loop and then you pull it tight and sometimes it needs a bit of help because it's a bit too fat for the hole 
you can pull it a little bit from the back and then pull it up tightly like that. When it's in this pocket, it'll it'll be that long. Too long. It's too long for me. I want it to be shorter. I don't want it to hang over the edge. I'm going to just trim these ends again a little bit more carefully this time. And now this need, just needs to be to be glued. Okay, bird, this side and this side. It's just along here. I have been known to glue the wrong side, so I don't want that to happen. And that will do nicely. And I'm going to pop it down in the bottom corner here on this beautiful green background. like that and then this will go in it however one more thing I told you I hadn't forgotten that I have this little bar it's a sticker I, I love this forever but it doesn't quite cover it otherwise I would definitely choose that yeah it's too bad so I'm going to use this sticker instead and just cover up part four, Leonor. Yep, I think that's straight. All right, and this can go in here like that. This needs to uncurl, which it will do. I'll clear the decks a little bit here. So there's our finished page layout. For further reference, this is painted with acrylic paints and just brushed on and let dry. And then the stencil was also acrylic paints. I mixed the paints to get this purple. And this is just a book page. This is um, a saying. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you can be notified when I've got a new video. And I'll see you next time.